there's like two textures. I don't completely understand this yet, but basically you're saying like, what's the normal texture look like? What's kind of the smoothness? They integrate with each other a little bit. I'm mixing two things together basically. And boom, it just immediately made this grassy. Of course, the sun is kind of in the way there, but you know, when I first did this, I was like, this is really cool too. I mean, the other thing looked nice, but um, this is kind of cool. It's immediately is like this. Well, I'm going to give a little bit of a difference to whatever we're seeing here. So what we could do is just add another texture, and I'll show you how we can kind of paint, paint stuff. Um, texture. You can just click on it. You know, you get the two different textures right now that we're using in the world. We're just going to click on the one texture. I'm going to just start painting. Um, I should be able to just paint, yeah. I don't know if you've gotten to the CIG or not. I mean, it's just kind of cool though, right? <laughs> because it's stuff that, you know, usually we have a designer come in maybe and you know, help with some of the stuff just to make it look, look a, little, a little bit different than what we, uh, what we can do ourselves. But I'm going to add a third texture really quick. Okay, um, I'll try to work through this one pretty quickly, but you can also add trees, right? So um, they gave you stuff for free in the environment. We're going to say, uh, do they have a palm tree here? You can search. A palm tree. Add. One thing I noticed is Unity seems to want to add a ton of trees. I'm, like, I'm talking about a lot. Like, if you're dealing with them, maybe you're dealing with a couple of trees, but it will drop by default like 500 trees, <laughs> just like right there. And that, of course, is going to slow your game down a little bit, I think. Um, for whatever reason, but I like to drop it, you know, a lot of landscaping stuff, I just want to drop one or two trees at a time. You're making an oasis, aren't you? What's that? You're making an oasis, aren't well, you? Well, I, mean, I got the water coming right now, right? So, <laughs> for some reason, the sun is, I mean, this is why I struggle with a lot of times, like, the lighting sometimes gets affected, because it is constantly trying to calculate the lighting right now as I'm dropping stuff on the scene, but it looks like this is what the lighting, it thinks the lighting should be right now, for whatever, for whatever reason. <laughs> Okay, so we said water, right? So let's go ahead and just add a little bit of a little bit of water just to get this thing to look a little bit cooler. In standard assets, I believe in the environment, we'll have water, and they have their own prefab. So we're going to say, well, let's take a. There's a simpler one than that. Oh, the trees are going to exist in the water, I think that's fine. So, I mean, one thing you'll notice here is, I think the camera is probably not ready. Um, if I press play, you're probably not going to see it. Yeah. Let's try to get that a little more in the scene. Let's kind of keep the camera over here. Main camera, line with the view. And it's not moving. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, it is moving. It's very hard to see on this monitor. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna try to move the light. This is where I, this is where I lose time a lot because I'm just like kind of playing with things. But in this case, I'm gonna try to rotate the light a little bit to try to get um, a little bit more lighting in the level there. Somewhere rotate. Somewhere rotate. Because I'm nowhere near it, I think this it's not gonna cause any shadow change. Let's try to move it over there. It's still pretty dark, but it's probably what we deal with. Okay. So anyway, it actually looks a lot better on a, like a normal normal monitor. I think. I mean, it's nice that they give it for free, but it's it's pretty nice looking just just out of the box, basically. They also have some other water uh, features that are kind of like ocean based, so it's really pretty cool. Okay. So let's get into the physics a little bit of the application now. So none of these cubes or anything. They're not really doing anything. They're just hovering there. Um, in order to add physics to objects, you need to add something called a rigid body component, right? So we've been adding scripts as components, now we're going to add a rigid body. So let's go ahead and uh, add a player to our, our game, and then we're going to add rigid bodies to them. We'll see what, that, what happens with that. So uh, if I go back to the game objects here, we go to one of the cubes. If we look at uh, add component, I'm going to add a rigid body, and we'll kind of see what happens there. 
So again, this is to kind of apply physics to any object. Without the rigid body, it's really not, there's no physics involved, it's not calculating anything. If I go ahead and just save that, so one of the cubes has a rigid body now, I'm not sure if the camera's in view, there it is. It automatically took the gravity, right? So if you look at the rigid body uh, window, property window over here, it already has is gravity. Of course, if I, if I uncheck use gravity, it's, it's going to float again, right? You've got other things that are mass, you know, drag, angular drag, we might get into, but if I change the mass, you know, if two things collide, there's a calculation that's going to happen based on the mass probably, right? A heavier thing will have a precedent, basically. So uh, let's see if we can go back to our prefab, though, um, and try to change all the cubes. Um, I think I, we actually highlight all of these probably and say add rigid body. Okay, they're all falling down. Okay, so now we want to add up. We want to add our uh, player to the game. Let's say so. Our player is going to be a sphere. This is this, this is the thing we're going to try to control. So we're going to say game object, 3D object, um, create a sphere. It's pretty small, so let's just make it a little bit bigger. I am curious as to what ragdoll is. I uh, <laughs> added it once, and it was confusing. <laughs> it added a lot of like arms and legs, you know, joints and stuff like that. Right. It's ragdoll, basically, right? Yeah. But it, I think it's their version of a free character kind of. Yeah. Um, where you can download a lot of free characters yourself. Okay. I want to move that down. This is kind of where you lose time a little bit. I mean, when you're developing, it's not. It's still kind of fun, but you're uh, you're just kind of dragging stuff around. Are there commercial games based upon this that people actually buy and sell? There are a lot. So if you look at the asset store, there's quite a. Few quite a lot of applications that have been developed, and you don't have to develop an application, like, of course, these cubes are hilariously awesome, right? I mean, G might buy them off of me. Yep. Um, things in the asset store, like, like let's say these cubes, you can sell them, and there are people that are make, have made like over a million dollars with the assets they've created on there. Yeah. So you don't have to create a full game. You can create your own physics and materials that other people might want to consume. Like, I consumed the Sky Pack. The Sky Pack, I think, maybe was five bucks. This guy is certainly rich, if you read the reviews. It just has six guys in it, but it's beautiful. Like um, for a uh, new EU developer kind, of just like it looks so much better than whatever comes out of the box. For five bucks, I'm going to take it. Um, okay, so we have a sphere. I think I need to add a rigid body as well because we're going to start playing with this. Uh, that's all I want to do there. Okay, so now we're going to try to control the sphere with the leap. Okay, so this is one of the more complicated scripts. Okay, so we need to add the leap to the scene first, the hand controller, and then we're going to add a script to try to control the sphere. <coughs> so I'm going to add the leap. I did not do that yet uh, for the scene. So I'm going to go into the leap motion, prefabs, hand controller, and just kind of move it, move it wherever. Um, it, it does not matter because what we're going to do is try to read some input. So we're not going to be reading kind of your, uh, we're not going to read where your hand is and try to interact with the hand. I'm just going to try to read a gesture kind of that you're doing. So I don't necessarily need it anywhere in the scene. So what I'm going to do is add a script to the sphere. So we'll say add component, new script, blue sphere. And I'll click it. This is one of the more complicated scripts. I'll write it here and I'll try to explain it. I want to get to some of the virtual reality stuff before we go. So I want to try to move a little quicker here. Um, okay, so in order to uh, interact with the leap controller though, it's, it's very easy actually. Um, we have a using leap. And it leap has an object called a controller. And this is basically it. It, it finds a controller now in the scene based on this. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're just going to initialize the controller. And you can do things to see if it's connected and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, we talked about update. I won't go into this too much. You can Google this. But basically, fixed update is for some more complicated physics that you want to do. Okay? If I don't do this, actually, uh, my, my machine will uh, chop the game a little bit. You'll, you'll see a noticeable chop. So the fixed update is where you want to do some more complicated physics, where um, certain things will go into update, certain things will go into fixed update. Okay, so we have a controller object at this uh, instance. How do we read kind of the input that you know, Jim is going to be giving us? So basically, in the leap object, you have a frame, okay? So this is basically how you kind of get the frame's information with the frame data that it captured that Jim is currently providing. <coughs> Remember, this is operating very quickly, once per frame, so it's constantly trying to update this data for us. Um, if we look at, we want to get the hand, right? So we want to get one of the hands, let's say. In the frame object, you have a hands property, okay? And inside the hands property, you can get a lot of stuff. You can say front most, left most, right most, 
blah, blah, blah. So I'm just going to say front most for whatever reason in case he has two hands there. Um, so here's the cool part now. Uh, we were talking about all these other gestures, which we're not going over, but you have something called pinch strength and grab strength. So I'm going to deal with grab strength here. So what grab strength basically means in the leap world is how close is his hand? Like how, how strong is he closing his hand right now? If he opens his hand totally open, it's going to be 0.0. .0. If you close it, it's a 1.0. Or uh, yeah, it's 1.0 uh, flow. So here I'm going to say, um, if the grab strength is you know, kind of greater than 0.9, so I'm almost saying, hey, is it almost a full grab? I want to do something about that, okay? Um, otherwise, I'm going to do something else. So I think what we're going to do really quickly here is just write a debugger. Just to test that. I think that's all we want there. So again, this was a script that we attached to the sphere. It's trying to read leap information. Um, so we're going to hit play and see See what happens, see if it actually, when you put your hand there, if it's able to detect a grab. Yeah, and then try closing your hand. All right. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, try, it's not showing the hand. hand. Yeah, it's not going to show the hand. Yeah, it's not going to show the hand. I moved the, I moved the lead controller far away. And so that's uh, so all I wanted to see is like, oh, yeah, we got into the method. We got into where we want to be. So it's actually able to detect that he's, uh, he's got a grab hand. Okay, so this is where a little more complicated code comes in. But basically, what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, what was his, uh, what's his hand position? Like, what, what is his, uh, the x, y, z coordinate of his hand? Again, it's a vector, okay? So it's basically, what is the x, y, z coordinate? This is where I um, talked about how we need to kind of move the coordinates of his hand into Unity's, Unity's world. They have a method for us called Unity Scaled um, that basically says, this might be a vector three, right? So this is where his hand kind of is in relation to the the 3D world, okay? So what I want to do though is I'm, I'm going to say I'm going to say that when his hand is uh, when it's grabbed, I want to try to detect where his hand is above the leap and move the sphere. So the first time I implemented this, I I, I moved the position of the sphere, okay? Instead of actually trying to add physics to it, and what happened then is the sphere was you know flying around the world, but it wasn't rolling. Right, so it's just kind of changing the position of the object. So you want to deal with the physics of the object, so we're actually going to try to add a force. So what that means is when Jim moves his hand farther away from something, it's going to try to add, let's say, a stronger force. And um, if you move, if you move his hand somewhere else, it's going to add a strong force the other way, let's say. So it's going to be constantly reading for his input to try to just add a force to the sphere. So in order to deal with um, physics, though, in uh, this rigid body, um, you can access this rigid body in this format. I think you just say, just like the same way we were saying, hey, what's the um, game object attached to this script? I think this is a shortcut for this. So the script right now is saying, hey, um, who am I attached to right now? I'm attached to this game object, sphere. And also, do you have a rigid body attached to you? I think this is not the right code. Give me a second. Um, you actually have to define this, I believe, rigid body. So what uh, this method does is basically saying, hey, go, go find me a component that's attached to this object called rigid body right now, if, if you have one. You want to do a null check on it, because if it doesn't have a rigid body, it's going to be null in this case. But we do have a rigid body attached to the script, so it's going to take it. Um, but what do we want to do to it? So what we're going to do is we're going to say add force. So on the rigid body, you have a lot of methods. One of them says we're going to add a force to you. So what is the force that you want to add? I'll try to explain this after I type it. Um, Okay, so we're saying, hey, we want to add a force to this sphere. You know, the sphere is sitting there, and, and we're trying to read some input from Jim Pan. We want to try to add some type of force to it. But what, what, what directions do you want to add the force to? So we want to add an X to it, and we want to add a Z. So we're trying to move the ball without moving it up in the air, right? So I, I left the, the Y property of it as zero. So we're saying, whatever you do, just don't make the ball go up in the air because it's supposed to stay on the level. But try to mimic, basically, his hand. So the, wherever his hand position is, the X coordinate, Basically, try to move the sphere um, that way. We apply a force to the x coordinate that way. If he's trying to um, move forward or backward in the z coordinate, again, try to use the z coordinate to apply some force to get the sphere to move in that in that position. 
um, you do need to take into account the mass. So like I'm basically saying, hey, whatever force you use, try to have a little bit higher value than the current mass, otherwise it's not going to move much, right? So if you're talking about me trying to tackle a football player, I'm going to fall to the ground probably, right? I won't be able to move the guy, right? So I'm, in this case, I'm just basically saying, hey, I'm, hyper, I'm heavier than the football guy. Um, I'm going to try to move him. Of course, that will never be true. But um, Okay, so I think that's, uh, that's one thing. And uh, the other thing is, when you release your hands, so what, what I notice is when you're moving stuff around the world with your arms, you might want to stop the ball right where it's at, rather than let it roll. So what I'm going to do is when the, when the grab strength is not anything close to where your closed hand, I'm just going to stop the velocity of the object. So I think you can say, I think you can say, yeah. That's a rapid stop? It's an immediate stop. So if he doesn't, if he keeps the hand held though, and he tries to return to the zero, 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 if he tries to keep return to zero, zero, zero on it, then it won't apply any more force, right? Well, um, you know, he's trying to apply force and move something. If he tries to center his hand, the ball will keep moving with the physics um, that are that's already applied to it. It's going to stop though at some point. And actually, I could show you that it gets more complicated, but you need to apply an angular drag. So if you look at the sphere, um, if we look at the sphere object, uh, I think it's uh, rigid body. There's something called angular drag. So that's uh, the drag is more from the side, but the angular drag is how much does the floor of the world stop me? So in this case, it's saying 0.05. I think if I make that zero, it's possible that that, will, that ball will, won't stop. It'll just keep rolling. Um, and if he tries to keep his hand you know, you know, right in the position. But here, I'm going to ask him to let go, and it should stop the ball. Anyway, we wrote the script, so let's kind of see what happens there. See if you can move it now, yeah. Now, yeah, moving really fast. And, and remember, your hand can't be tracked by the leaf, so that's oh, the yeah. great part of that. Yeah, like you can't move too far. And also, this might be buggy, I don't know. I can't see because I'm upside down. Is it moving relatively to yes. what you're trying to do? Or yes. Not? yes, off frame. Now it's off the frame. And try that again and see yeah. if you can move it like forward and then to the side or something. All right, so nobody else is doing that for you. <laughs> it's gone. Okay, you lose. That's not win. You lose. <laughs> Sorry. It's a goal. It's a goal. All right. <laughs> um, but you feel like it's moving to where you think it should go, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so that's, that's kind of what I was looking for a little bit. It's hard for everyone else to see right now, right? But basically moving his arm in the world, he feels like he's moving the ball right now. Um, and if you let go, I think you can also demonstrate that. Move it. Just try to let go of oh, your yeah. hand. You open your hand up. It needs to pick up your hand first, too, I think. And I mean, oh. I've definitely seen the leap. I've definitely seen the leap get buggy. Like in this case, it might be it might be bugged out. I'll try to start it again. Um, but yeah, it can't read your hand too much. So you don't have to move your hand too much. You can just keep it as a fist above it. And it's really, it really maybe it crashed, dude. Maybe it's been crashed. I noticed when you were still there. When we were looking at the hand, it didn't always like when I made a fist. Yeah. It translated that into like the claw. Or something. Yeah, it's not perfect. I mean, that's why it's hard for me to say I'm going to recommend it. But I mean, try again. Keep your hand about a foot that's above it. That's what I it. saw with the foot above it. Yeah, and close, and close it. There you go. Yeah. And try to, yeah, you just let go and it stops, right? See stop. if you can get to move again and it stops. That's basically what I want. Okay. But yeah, it, 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 uh, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, so the kind of, the far, it's not the mo the speed of your motion, it's kind of the, st the distance of how far away you are from that, the control, oh, okay. right? So it's, and once you're, you're going out of the view, because the leaf has a very limited view, unfortunately, it, it won't pick it up, but. That's kind of what I, see, I want to show you guys with that. Um, okay, so we're, I'm going to skip through a couple of these things because I don't want to get this too late, but I want to get the camera to follow you because you see you're moving all over the place and I can't, I can't follow you, right? So let's try, to, let's try to get the camera to follow the sphere. So um, this is a kind of interesting script. It's, it's fairly easy. Um, so basically we're saying, hey, this main camera, why, why don't you start moving with the sphere? So we're going to add a script to this and we'll say follow all sphere. Okay, we're not going to need this guy because we're basically saying on update we want to do certain things. Um, so remember, we can create all these properties, right? We can set them um, in Unity. So one of them is going to be, hey, give me the object that you want me to follow. So this is going to be pretty easy. So we're going to say, hey, for whatever I'm attached to, which is the camera, can you change its transformation's position, right? That's what we're dealing with now is the camera's position. We're saying, hey, I want to... I want to keep this thing moving. I don't want it to stick there. I want to program programmatically move it. But where do you want to move it to? So we're going to say, again, it's always going to want the x and the y and the z, basically, for the vector. So we're going to say, what is the other object's x position? I'm going to keep this. I'll explain that uh, shortly.
Okay, so what, I, what I'm doing here, basically, I could just say x, I could say the other object's x, the other object's y, z. It's going to put the camera like right on top of the ball, basically, right? So in the z index, I'm saying, hey, always keep yourself 10 units away so I can see the ball still. And in the y, um, always keep yourself at a height of 5. So no matter, no matter if your ball is like hitting physics and you're bouncing all over the place nonsensically, the camera will kind of stay there, otherwise it'll get jittery. 